Hi, and welcome to this special broadcast directly from our studios at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Orlando, Florida. My name is Edgar, and today I have a special treat for all the women who are listening, and it's a special invitation to our 2015 Women's Conference under the title, Tested and True, Women and the Truth of Christian Suffering. This Women's Conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church the 17th and 18th of July. The women will greatly enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship and music, and biblical teaching. And speaking of biblical teaching, allow me to present our special guest who is joining us via phone all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Miss Susan J. Heck. Thanks for taking the time to join us on this broadcast, Susan. Thank you, Edgar. It's a joy to be here also. In our last broadcast, Susan, you spoke to the women listeners about five keys to loving life and the importance of how women should view life from a biblical perspective. Uh, On this broadcast, I'd like to ask you about the second and third session titled, What to Do in the Fiery Furnace. Now, it seems the temperature is going to increase these two sessions. Uh, What should the women expect to learn uh, in these particular sessions that you're going to be speaking? Well, it is going to be hot. In fact, so much so that we're going to have two sessions to cover what to do in the fiery furnace. We'll have two parts to that Saturday morning. And again, Edgar, I I get concerned about uh, Christendom today. I don't mean to be just negative, but these are the things I see as I travel around the U.S. and even internationally. And I see women who are not embracing suffering as a means to sanctification. And, um, you know, Elizabeth Elliott, who is one of my... um, Mentors, she just passed away last week, and I, I thought about, you know, so many times I've learned from her in her conferences about embracing the suffering and seeing it as a means to her sanctification, and even her husband testified that even her dementia, uh, she embraced that as God's will for her life and means to sanctification. And so we're going to look at what to do in the furnace. And, you know, all of us have trials, and all of us have uh, suffering that we go through for the cause of Christ, And I think one of the first questions that we ask is, why, Lord? Why is this happening to me? And Peter says, don't be surprised at the fiery trial which is fit to test you as though some strange thing happened to you. And I don't know why Christians think they're immune to suffering uh, because uh, Christ has promised that. In fact, he told us, Uh, He told the disciples, you know, consider the cost. Before you embrace me as your Lord, consider the cost. Because uh, Paul goes on to say in in one of his epistles, we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, uh, but we do ask why. Why, Lord, is this happening? And then how? How do you want me to go through this suffering or this trial? And so we're going to look at seven reasons why we suffer And I hope that these will be an encouragement to the women. And some of those are, you know, it's a promise. It's going to happen to us. There's a purpose. Uh, One of the reasons we suffer in order to partake in Christ's sufferings, and and I know that that might be a difficult concept for women to uh, endure or to enjoy, but I, I know for me as I grow in my walk with the Lord, it's a joy to be able to know that, my Lord suffered uh, far more than I will ever suffer. And um, so it's a joy to go through him uh, in the fiery furnace. And sometimes we actually suffer because of our own sin. And I know that, um, you know, I've, I've suffered in my own life. I've been chastened by the Lord, and it's, it's because of my own sin. And so we're going to look at that as well, and we're going to look at this, this mysterious passage also where Peter says that, Judgment begins at the house of God. And you know, Edgar, I think we're seeing that today in our nation, that judgment has begun to fall, and it's going to fall in the house of God. And so that's another reason why we suffer. Um, then we're going to look at attitudes. How should, I su- how should I go through suffering and trials? And it's not with a frown on our face. Peter says we're to rejoice. And uh, rejoicing, knowing that glory is to follow, the Holy Spirit will refresh in us, and we uh, go through it unashamed and committing our soul to him. And so this is going to be, uh, I promise, a great uh, two sessions we'll have together because Peter writes some very pointed but powerful words here. And I pray to the Lord Jesus that the women will see uh, suffering as a means to their sanctification. And, you know, um, uh, we we want Christianity, you know, we want the health, wealth, and the prosperity, but we don't want any of the trials and the suffering that come. And uh, I pray that women will see this as a joy. And it seems like the most the most godliest people I've met are the people that have suffered the most for Christ. And God has used that to refine them 
and bring them forth as gold, as Job says. So I hope the women will, will get a glimpse of that and be excited about waking up Saturday morning and hearing what Peter has to say through the, through the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing a little bit of the great teaching that is to come. And for all the women that are out there who are listening, let me encourage you to register today so you can be a part of our 2015 Women's Conference under the title, Tested and True, Women and the Truth of Christian Suffering. This conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church the 17th and 18th of July. Uh, You will enjoy a great time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. So take advantage and register today. You can do that online at www.testedandtrue.net. Once again, www.testedandtrue.net. And if you have any questions or need help with the registration process, please give us a call here at our church offices at 407-971-7685. 407-971-7685 Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at the conference. God bless you.